Oh, hello. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to talk about what is still to come for Kill Team, rumours and predictions for the next box, next boxes, and we're going to talk a little bit on the next edition of the game as well. So it's uh, buckle up, and I'll try and separate out the rumours that I've heard from the speculation that I'm having. So we're going to start off with the roadmap. We've run out of roadmap. We might have expected to have a new roadmap uh, soonish, but I don't think there's going to be a Warhammer Fest this year. So, Salvation was supposed to come out in Autumn. It was late, we know that they missed Autumn. But I am still expecting Nightmare to come out in the winter. Um, now, happy little primary school uh, seasons wheel there. Uh, for those of you that are unsure, winter is um, ending at the end of February. That's this month. So, I'm expecting Kill Team Nightmare within 28 days. Now, we seem, it's a little bit janky, we seem to have settled into a two-week pre-order pattern. Like, that seems to be permanent now. So, Deathwing Assault, the big uh, Dark Angel FOMO box, was previewed on the 14th of January, hit pre-orders a week later on the 20th, and is releasing on the 3rd. Pre-order announcement after that was weird. Old World Made to Order Metals. And they're not properly coming out, because it's a Made to Order product, and so might take up to 180 days and all that but if we could assume and it is an assumption if we assume that that eats the release window for the 10th of february and then we've got the flesh eats at courts that we know have been previewed we don't actually know how long their pre-order window is going to be either but if we're making an assumption they be coming out on the 17th right so things are going to be a lot clearer on saturday when we get the actual release date for the flesh eater courts um for sure right because that, that will tell us for sure where we are with, with days left in February. But assuming that the Flesh Eater Courts are coming out on the 17th, that means that only the 24th of February is left. And excitingly, that means that on, on Sunday, the Sunday preview should be Kill Team Nightmare. That's, you know, that's why I'm making this video today. I, you know, so we'll see. We'll see in just a few days. Okay, I'm, I'm suggesting that we might get the Sunday preview, Kill Team Nightmare, um th this sunday now that will let us catch up with the roadmap and then we'll be on track to release kill team nightmare in the winter so that brings us on to what has been called by chapter master valrak kill team high fall so this is supposed to be the next box is becoming in spring march april may okay um, and apparently this is going to be votan versus brood brothers apparently the votan are dismounted pioneers so that's the hover bike fellas, the 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 the, the pioneers. They're like um, got a picture of them on a on a future slide, but they're like Votan pioneer guys. <coughs> um, and Brew Brothers are uh, a a gene stealer cult unit that was based on the plastic Cadian kit, the the previous plastic Cadian kit plus an upgrade sprue. And so it fits the pattern of being a new set. Plus an upgrade sprue set, as we know uh, Nightmare is, is right? Um, and it makes a lot of sense from Games Workshop's point of view, because Brood Brothers are definitely something they'd want... If they tend to keep them around in the GC Local Codex, they're definitely something that they'd want to replace, because they don't want to keep trying to make the old potato hands Cadian sprue until the end of days, just because it's compatible with the old Brood Brothers sprue, right? And the Votan would be a whole new kit. So let's just do a little deep dive into what the Brood Brothers might be if they come, you know? Uh, Brood Brothers seem like they might be a bit meh for, for a kill team. First of all, can I say that the, the, the rumour that was going around that was saying, like, oh, there's not a Tyranid release, but there's going to be a second Gene Stealer cult release that should make Tyranid players really happy. That's kind of aged tragically, if this is true, because I think. Brew Brothers are about as far away from Tyranids as you can get, while still tangentially having something to do with Tyranids. Okay, they have like the they, they have like the barest soupçon of uh of similarity sort of ladled on there, right? The the, the, the barest little morsel of Tyranid essence sprinkled over a a, a, a very non-Tyranid looking team, right? So, because it's based on the new Cadian kit, so the new Cadian kit's on the left of your screen doesn't include the heavy weapon, okay? So we're going to get 10 models, hitting on 4, 7 wounds, 5 up save with a comms and a couple of gunners. Right, the Cadian box comes with a flame, a grenade launcher, melter and plasma gun, 
probably only arms for two of those, I would suggest. Maybe you'll get a third gunner. Maybe you'll get a fourth gunner, I don't know. Um, and then a sergeant with a chainsaw and a bolt pistol. The sergeant in the Cadian Sprue doesn't have power weapon, plasma pistol. Those aren't options he has. He does have options for a drum-fed auto gun. No idea if that doesn't mean in 40k. But it's interesting and it could do something in Kill Team, I suppose, right? But then this begs the question. What on earth could a Brood Brother Sprue add to elevate that to a competitive level? Because we know... Like, at the moment, they're just like Krieg, but with less specialists, and the le no, no ability to take an extra four models, right? You know, so what what are they going to add in terms of specialists to try and elevate that up? Um, you know, the original Brood Brother frame was purely aesthetic. It's pictured in the middle. It's mainly heads with some logos and some wicked-looking knives, okay? But there's no reason, I, I don't think there's any reason why the new Brood Brothers frame they make couldn't also include some parts that would have in-game effect, at least in Kill Team, even if they didn't go on to have in-game effect in 40k. So, the GC Little seem to like swords, so I can definitely see some kind of sword option for the sergeant to replace that chain sword with something with a better melee profile. Maybe they're going to add some combat specialists, you know, maybe you'll get a, a Brood Brother that's actually growing a tyranny claw out of his back or something like that that'd be kind of cool or one with a big head that's got some psychic powers like a mini psycho fella i don't know maybe they could add now this is something that's appeared in the tyranid range i don't know the name for them but i've put in a random tyranid up there that shows what i mean like there's these little dumpy mini baby gene stealer cult things that the tyranids have now maybe they could put in one or two of those like uh you know pokemon type units um that would, you know, we, we've seen it before with, with Hyrotech, where they included two brand new models, ostensibly on an upgrade sprue that were just models in their own right. So that's also an option to bring it up to a 12 man team. They could also, I suppose, chuck, you know, do like they do with Bloodied and chuck an extra sprue in the box that's got a character or two on, like it's happened before. Hyrotech Circle, they chucked in the, uh, the Cryptech. Bloodied, they chucked in the Ogryn and the Commissar from, um, Blackstone Fortress, so maybe they would chuck in something else here. I don't know what that would be, though, because you couldn't just throw in a Gene Stealer Cult. I'm trying to think. I don't think you could really just throw in one of the Gene Stealer Cult's characters, along with Cadian Brood Brothers. Maybe you could throw in one of the Cadian characters. Maybe you could throw in some kind of Mega. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There are avenues they can go down, but they're going to have to do something, because on the face of it, another Imperial Guard team with 10 guys with Melter Guns, and, uh, you know, obviously they'll have rules. They'll have cool gene stealery rules for hiding, and maybe they'll have something like off-board artillery, and maybe they'll even have a rule where, you know, you have this rule, but you can trade it away for, like, four or five more guys. Um, so they could be a really awesome team, but just from, from the plastic, it's very kind of... Eh, you know. Uh, so that was a little bit of deep thought about Brood Brothers. Let's have a little bit of shallow thought about dismounted pioneers. So here are the Hearthkin pioneers. If you can see them past their revolting bicycles, you can actually see that they're cool little dwarf fellas in like leather trench coats with uh, bolt pistols. And then I think they have shotguns as well clambered to the side of their bikes, right? I think they might be really cool because they'll be dwarf cowboys in leather dusters with shotguns and bolt pistols. So if you're like me and you like the old squats as an idea and you thought they were cool and you hate all the ways in which the Votans aren't the squats, like maybe the, maybe don't know, haven't seen them Models, but maybe the pioneers are here with their more like cowboy like frontiersman aesthetic to be the the you know squats of people that wanted traditional squats like if they lent into that squat aesthetic like give us some sunglasses and some big beards right on the sprue they might be really funny and really cool um you know people that don't want them want to play proper vote and have already got proper Votan available, which is the right round to do it, right? G give people a, a very default-looking team for people who love the army, and then do a, a, a team that's a bit more cool, and a bit more oddball, a bit more weird for people that like that kind of thing. I think that's pretty cool. Although, again, rules-wise, it's pretty challenging. These are still little dwarves with little stubby legs, so presumably they're going to have the um, 
reduced movement speed of a typical Votan, while at the same time having slightly less technology. Like, they seem to be... Like, I know they've got the hover bikes, but they seem largely to be armed with, outside of their hover bikes, they've got pistols and shotguns and things like that. They don't seem to be carrying the big, massive, heavy weapons and smart missile systems and all this other nonsense that the the the, 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 the sort of Hearthkin uh, warriors do. So... It'd be interesting to see what tricks GW have up their sleeve to balance those. Um, but that's really all the speculation I can give you on the concept of uh, the dismounted Hearthkin Pioneers. So now we're getting into pure speculation land, really. So assumingly, we're getting a fourth box in the summer, right? Which is, by the way, defined as June, July, and August. Um, and if this happens, I expect it to happen early in this window. Uh, June time, I would expect to see this box. Uh, now, there was that little Reddit rumour that maybe we weren't getting a fourth box and maybe we were getting a third box, but I feel like those Reddit rumours have been more wrong than they have right, so maybe we can disregard them. Uh, if if High Fall is true as a concept, that would have been we'll have had a massive four Xenos teams this season and only one Imperial team in the Scouts and only one Chaos team in the Night Lords. So I would assume that Chaos versus Imperium just feels really likely for this box and it could be something totally off the wall again, you know, like, uh, you know, like that, like, beastman or or, or or navy something that nobody would possibly predict like that's possible maybe this is finally where we see the tax collectors um but but i will just float a few ideas because i can't help myself like i know people are saying croot and swooping hawks notably valrak and people are going to be like why are you trusting why are you trusting so hard this high fall rumor from valrak when you're dismissing out of hand his his croot rumor and his flying imperial guard rumor and his um, and his his eyes of the emperor. Remember that one, or or kill team space. I, I'm pretty sure Valrak sometimes watches my videos, and then he goes on his live streams where I'm almost always lurking, and and then he becomes enraged because he goes like, "I never said that. I never said that. This person clearly doesn't watch the videos. There are people out there making videos, and they're misquoting me." And what well, he did, dear viewer, say these things right, but it. You know, he obviously has his rep that he's got to try and maintain, and I think he gets a little bit. And I think it's because he, nobody likes to feel like they're the big successful guy, and then there's other people like going, "Oh yeah, you know, this guy said this." But in the real world, right? If one of the newspapers does a huge pile of investigative journalism and uncovers some like heinous thing in the heart of government and prints it on the front page, all the other newspapers that didn't do the work the next day they don't go, "Yeah, we're not going to mention that." Um, yeah. obviously, you know, go watch Valrax videos. I do. I watch all his stuff. I sit in his and I sit in his uh, live streams, like not every single live stream, but quite often, right? Um, and usually end up with a gifted membership from his really generous chat. Like um, Valrax rumors are interesting, but to answer the question, set why am I trusting the set of Valrax rumors back here? Like, why why do I believe this? And I'm over here on this page going, yeah, but it's not going to be crude. It's not going to be super hogs. Because he gave the box a name. Like the thing to realize about Valrak is a rumor aggregator. He doesn't actually like he's not a source himself. He doesn't have inside information himself. Like a lot of us with YouTube channels, people tell him things. The bigger you are as a YouTube channel, the more people will send you more things. And so obviously some of the things he gets sent are true and others are made up. That's just the nature of the game, right? He is a humble not so humble. I was going to say humble vessel to do the Yes Minister thing. He is just a humble vessel. He is not a humble vessel. Uh, he's quite a um, a proud vessel, I, I would say. But a vessel he is nonetheless for he, uh, the rumours that are sent to him. But once he gives something a name and he goes all in on that level of detail, like I fundamentally believe that High Fall, even though the name sounds weird, um, people on my live stream the other day were saying, shouldn't it be Hive Fall? That would make more sense. Pretty sure he said High Fall. Um, but, you know, he was right by Nightmare. It is actually called Nightmare. So, I think that's happening. I think some of the other things, not so much. Anyway, enough about Chapter Master Valrak. He's got enough free publicity from me. You know what they say, all publicity is, is good publicity. I'm not going to get a shout-out from him. It's fine. Uh, Grey Knights, you know, can you imagine if that happened? We got raided by Valrax. Wow. Um, Grey Knights versus Death Guard. And this is totally, this is totally, I'm going to, conf I've confused issues. Because I've gone off on one about Valrax. This is not, this is, this is me making shit up now, right? But Grey Knights versus Death Guard will be a really awesome thematic box. 
that would take off two of the kill teams that we kind of need from the compendium, and it would um, it would just be awesome. It would be like um, Chaos Gate, right? It would just be awesome. Um, it 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 could be the Grey Knights with new models. I don't think Terminators per se. I think like the Power Armor Grey Knights, but like the teleport or one or two of them would be the teleporty ones. And especially on Better Destiny, you'd be jumping your guys all around there, and it would give you a great like advantage in the, in the game mode. But then ultimately, they'd just be guys with bolters, and you'd have to kind of like yeah, they're Space Marines, and yeah, they can fly, and yeah, they got bolters, but at the same time, that, and they got psychic powers, and then it's like yeah, okay, I mean. That'd be an awesome elite team. And on the other hand, you'd have Plague Marines, who I very much could just be the standard Plague Marines that they have, but with a, an upgrade sprue, they'd be a great upgrade sprue team. I've said that. They would have been a great White, white Dwarf team if we were still doing that um, as, as a community. Well, they're putting the Scouts rules in White Dwarf, which will be interesting to see if that just literally is the Scout rules from Salvation. That's a whole other thing, though. We do also miss Custodes and Demons. I just feel like they fit less. Like, even against even against Grey Knights, you think, well, why Grey Knights and, and Plague Marines? Why not Grey Knights and Demons? It could be Grey Knights and Demons. I just can't really see a, a blood letter with radio. Like, I I don't think that Demons fit. Like, it would be, it would be like, it would be another... I mean, in fairness, they've just done Aspect Warriors, and they've just... And they're doing uh, Mandrakes. So maybe they would do Demons, right? Because Demons fit just as well as Aspect Warriors or, or Mandrakes. Um, you know, and that you could have them as an Aspect Warriors team. In fact, you could make... You could almost make a demons team that was exactly like an aspect warriors team if you really wanted to like oh let's re-sculpt the horrors and sell you a box of horrors but by the way if you want to include plague bearers or daemonettes or blood letters you totally can and if you include all of them they all get to do a thing and if you go mono god you get to double up on that one god's thing like uh, it almost writes itself but people would hate it People would hate it because you've seen the reaction online to the aspect warriors team everyone's like that's not what I wanted I wanted a fire dragon I wanted a Dark Reaper. I wanted the to be more specialists, even though it doesn't fit the law. But people like specialists. They they want those individuals. That's, that's what the kill team community wants. They want the cool little plastic pieces for the individual little characters. That is what for at least for a proportion of people out there, that seems to be what it's about, right? Um, I'm just going to hit on a little bit for myself. This is this is pure. This isn't even speculation. That see, there's there's three gauges. Isn't there? There's there's rumor. <laughs> I have been told something. Okay, um, there's um, there, there's speculation where I've looked at the things I know and the things that I've been told, and I've constructed something that would fit the pattern. Okay, and then there's wish listing, which is I think this would be really cool, so they should do it. And this last bit is wish listing. Summer is when the Sisters of Battle Codex is coming out for Warhammer Forty Thousand, and you know, for those of you that don't know, we used to have a unit called Celestians, um, and it was just uh, the standard battle sister squad with a different paint scheme in the case of some of the orders. And they were basically veteran, veteran battle sisters. Same as you get veteran space marines or veteran guard, veteran battle sisters. That data sheet's gone. It's just disappeared in 10th edition, doesn't exist. It would be great if they. You can still get Celestian Sacrosants, people on the flipping hobby stream know that you can still get celestian sacrosancts because i'm painting them for like a month um but you can still get celestian sacrosancts right which are the sisters with the shields but what you can't get is the ordinary celestians so what they could decide to do potentially is create an upgrade sprue for the battle sister box and make a celestian kill team with a couple of extra bits like a comms person and someone who's singing or something you know just a couple of extra churchy ones that would be really cool won't happen but it's cool but it's my channel and i'll wish list if i want to um kill team 24 coming in september gw loves a clicking a ticking clock a lot more than i do certainly i don't like this clock here um they love a ticking clock and the octarius box dropped in early september 2021 so three years later September 2024 it's reasonable to accept uh, expect a new edition and I happen to know I happen to know and I don't know anything else <laughs> okay but I have heard from a guy who's heard from a guy who would definitely know right so it's only gone from one to another to me so da, 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 that it is actively being playtested at the moment right uh kill team 24 is being playtested at the moment it does ex it exists Everything else I'm going to say is speculation, but you can take as basic rumor. You can take so, and we got those tiers: rumor, speculation, wish listing. Right. So rumor, I guess, and as close to confirmed as you get before it goes on to Warcom. But rumor, a new edition exists. Right. Speculation, it's coming out in September. 
Okay. Rumour down here from Mr. Lowbrow uh, over on the Discord, who's often right about a lot of things, he says, and it's a bit of a riddle, and I do wonder why people with riddles have to speak in riddles, right? But that's just the nature of the game, isn't it? He says, So I've been told not to invest in Season 1 stuff at all, and that Better Decima will be short-lived. But Into the Dark has some legs into the next edition. From which I am... So that's the room, rumour. That's the rumour, right? Now here comes the speculation. So from which I would speculate, okay, that we're going to get um, new terrain. I think we're getting new terrain. I think we're getting maps and new terrain for a season one style, like open world style combat, like normal. Because they're not going to come in with a variant gimmicky list. I think we're going to get normal, run of the mill, everyday, um, everyday kill team content. But I think we're going to get brand new terrain and we're going to get maps. Maps for narrative and probably they'll stick to the same format where they sell a box terrain. Separately they sell a box with two teams and a narrative sprue. We'll get maps for narrative that include the narrative sprue. And we'll get maps for competition play tournament play event play matched play whatever your preferred verbiage is but that thing where you go to the place and play the game and pretend to care about who wins and that will not use the extra narrative sprue now i'm aware that john from wales is currently on a big bandwagon included everybody should use the narrative sprue even for tournaments for better decima but Leave me to my explanations, okay? Let's not be haunted by the ghosts of other... It's the second other YouTuber I've name-dropped on my video. Like, no one name-drops me like this. No no one else is this kind. Um, anyway. Um, what was I saying? Yes. So, I think that's going to be what's happening. We're going to get brand new terrain uh, with layouts. And then Into the Dark, we'll probably get like a PDF release. Like I said, I made to order the terrain. Actually, the terrain's still available, but in a double set for 40k at the moment. I think they're going to, like, they must have done a lot of work on that Into the Dark terrain, right? The moulds, the steel moulds must have been quite expensive because it's very thick, chunky stuff. So I imagine they're going to keep that around. Maybe they're going to put a little pamphlet in the box. Here's how you play Into the Dark in the next edition of Kill Team. But I imagine they'll keep Into the Dark around, whereas it looks like... Better Decima is going to have a very limited shelf life. It's going to disappear. It's truly going to be the 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 um the the the, <laughs> the the kill team. What was the kill team eighteen product with the flayed ones and the heavy and the and the and the Primaris heavy guys that was out for ten minutes with the little was it not not arena? It was the one after that, and I didn't. Nobody bought it. The one with the little Necron doodads for the terrain it's truly going to be that right you know people are going to play a dozen games of better decima unless they really grind it all year because they're tournament guys people are going to play a dozen games of better decima and then it's going to come obsolete which is absolutely fantastic i tell you this doesn't encourage me to pay my and i'm aware i could use the better decima terrain for 40k um, but but could I? So let's talk about terrain. Um, so everybody's been reading the hazardous terrain area rules, and everyone, like I don't know if you know, everyone on the internet is losing their minds about the swimming pool. Uh, best name I've heard for Better Decima is, by the way, Adeptus Mechanicus Community Pool. So the Adeptus Mechanicus Community Pool has a swimming pool. The swimming pool has a rule. We've been through it on the channel before, but it's about how you um, you 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 are obscured if you draw a line more than two circles through the swimming pool. Um, everyone's going about that. It shouldn't be obscured. Brr, snipers, brr, this, brr, Phobos, brr, competitive play. Um, understood. But that's not for me right someone who likes to look at the, the tea leaves and the entrails of what games workshop releases are and try and divine what they're doing uh for me that's not the most interesting bit the most interesting bit might be okay the bit that i've circled in yellow on the slide here um if a cover line drawn to it so we're talking about the target operative if a cover line drawn to the target operative crosses into and out of the footprint of a gantry, however, um, sorry, I'll read the whole clause. The target operative is obscured if a cover line drawn to it crosses into and out of the footprint of a gantry. That's what I meant to read. Can't read, sorry. Um, it is a massive simplification, and actually also not that massive, but it's a simplification to the obscured rules, 
right? It's significant. Because previously, the obscured rules uh, in, in Kill Team in general were, well, if a cover line, if, if you, you, you need to be more, basically what they've removed is the necessity to be more than two inches away from the point at which the cover line crosses the heavy terrain. Now, it's just if the cover line crosses the heavy terrain, doesn't matter if you're more than two inches away or not, you're, you're obscured, right? It makes so much sense. And it's intuitive, and you can look at it and go, yeah. And it's also exactly how modern 40k works, right? Which is why 40k kind of needs ruins to work, and it's kind of a pain in the backside. They don't sell ruins. Um, but maybe this terrain set is going to be some ruins, right? So I think we're going to get ruins. I think we might even get ruins with, like, little movement. Maybe my head's still in Warhammer the Old World. I know I've been bleating on tediously about the old world but maybe we're going to get a ruin like and then the ruin is going to sit on a on a little thing so you'll have a thing with your ruin on right and then the thing will be the footprint of the ruin and then it'll be dead easy right and you'll be able to be like oh i'm on the i'm on the thing i'm in the thing so therefore i've got cover because i'm in the thing right but i'm not obscured by the thing oh i'm not on the thing but the line's going through the thing therefore right I'm obscured, I can't be shot, winner, right? If I'm in the thing, and I'm on conceal, I can't be shot, winner, unless they're on van. It, it makes sense. I'm sure there'll be other changes, but this is a change that I expect to see um, coming in to, to Kill Team. A, because it will help Kill Team to grow more, because we'll hoover up more people from 40k, right? Because... You know, everybody that plays 40k is a, a potential kill team player because they've already got a kill team, right? And they've already got a pile of terrain, you know? And so we'll hoover up more people that way. And they could sell this new terrain. They could sell it to 40k players that want the, the, the experience that you kind of... I feel that you kind of need to play 40k. I think you're really hamstrung at the minute with 40k at the moment. In the, the if, you, if you try and make... Um, if you try and make a 40k board, so let's say you get really into 40k and you've got a big house and you want to have your own gaming table and you want to buy all the plastic stuff and build and paint it because it's awesome and because you've won the lottery. Um, and you go on the Games Workshop website and your options are basically what we would call Moroc, which 40k players call Nackmund, but you, you know, the, the, the Moroc stuff. Um, that's it. Right, the big landing pad, bunker, the wall things. That's your lot. It's not actually really that good for 40k. 40k really needs ruins. They make one little pack of little, like, waist high ruins. Um, they used to have loads of ruined buildings that go along with them. Stop doing them. So maybe this version of Kill Team is where they're going to deliver new ruins, right? And it would be a change. It would be a big change. But I wouldn't think it would be too big a change because all it really boils down to, guys, is getting rid of the weird little murder hole where if you're, oh, if you're more than an inch away from terrain, but less than two inches away from the terrain, you just, you're not in cover at all, and you just die, right? And it's such a negative play experience when it happens to new players. Still happens to me, because I'm a moron, okay? So it would be a simplification, but I think it will be a simplification that, like, doesn't really take anything away from the game. Obviously, they'd have to change. I think there's some stuff in um, the Phobos about obscuring, about how changing the distance it takes to be obscuring. So they'd have to do some erratas for Phobos. Because I imagine that most of the armies would actually reasonably... Most of the teams would remain playable. I think they'll probably get rid of the compendium when we go to the next edition. Not because it doesn't work with the game, but just because they want to stop having to sell the compendium, quite frankly. Um, you could still probably pick up a compendium from the past and use it. I, I don't imagine that the actual stat block will change. I don't imagine that there'll be massive changes. Because, frankly, Kill Team is amazingly popular. It's their third most popular game, right? In terms of competitive games with Meta Watch articles and stuff, it's like 40k, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team. So I can't imagine them screwing it up that much. I'm sure they'll change more than just the one change I've outlined here. But this is just a change that I predict is going to happen because it ties up with what's going to go in the in the box. Now, I've wobbled about terrain, so obviously you're going to ask me what I think the teams are likely to be for the next edition. Bearing in mind that the last thing I said was a complete guess, this this is a complete guess and a complete guess, but I may as well say the line. I think it could actually be Catachans versus Tyranids. 
Um, I don't think that's totally unreasonable to say. Just listen to the logic, first of all. So, when I was in Warhammer World recently, now this is, this is absolutely true, right? When I was in Warhammer World recently, I went around the exhibition hall, as you do, because it was free, because I had an event ticket, and you can go and you can ask Nightfall, and you can ask Zimbad, and they were all on the they were all on the, on, on, on the thing as well at the same time. And when you get to the bit where there's the Imperial Guard, there's that big, if you know Warhammer World's museum, there's like the big Cadian display, and then there's the Imperial Guard, and then they have for each of the famous regiments they have the heavy metal models and some tanks painted up that go along with them so they have the Talans and the Destroyans um and the I believe, you know M Mordians Valhallans they've taken all those away so there are no Talans Mordians Valhallans Destroyans the only regiments on display in Warhammer World are Krieg Cadia Katachan and the one squad of Tanif ghosts, right? Now, it's not unusual for things to get removed from Warhammer World, but what is unusual for things to get removed and for their space to be removed, okay? So, often things get taken out to be used for photo shoots and battle reports and all those things, and then the curator comes and puts them back, right? But this is actually they've been removed and the things have been pushed around so there's no space for them to come back. Which just tells me, it doesn't tell you much, right? But it just tells me that in Games Workshop, Mark, like, we can't, like, we're not one day going to wake up and go, yeah, plastic, I'd love plastic to lance, by the way, I would buy them. Um, but we're not going to wake up one day and get plastic to lance. But it does mean that Games Workshop have again shown again and again and again they are not squatting the Katachan. I don't know why, right? I don't know anybody that loves Katachan. But they're not squatting the Catachans. The Catachans will rise again. And so that being the case, that being what they've decided to do, Catachans do need a new kit. Now, needing a new kit doesn't mean they need a new kit within Kill Team. But they are, now that we've had, you know, now that we're getting uh, man Mandrakes, right? And uh, we've, we've had Space Marine Scouts. Um, you know, they're, they're really, I'm, I'm getting the Brew Brothers have done, like... Catachans are really topping the list now of hideous old plastic kits. Like, they might be... Let me know in the comments if you think of something more hideous. Catachans might be the most hideous currently produced plastic kit for Warhammer 40,000. Yeah, they might be the thing that I've been most wanting to replace if I was Games Workshop. I mean, they, there's some other elderly things, Chaos Bikes, like, mm, but the Catachans, obviously, you're not going to get bikes and kill team. For infantry, though, I'm sure it's the Catachans. If you think of an uglier plastic infantry box, let me know. Um, Tyranids, I've got much less of an argument for Tyranids. It's a meme to say it's going to be Catachan versus Tyranids. Other than to say, hey, people really want a Tyranid team, and they really don't want the Gene Stealer, Cru Cult, or Broodlord team to be told, you know... <sighs> People get really funny about wanting teams to be a pure expression of their team. I tried to tell people for months, like, yeah, 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 we're probably not going to get a bespoke demons team uh, because probably Galapox is close enough. It's like, no, Galapox aren't demons. They they, they look very demony, but in the lore, I think you'll find, sir, they're mutants. So, okay, fine. They're a bit grad grindery for my take, that, but fine. They're not. We, we still are waiting a demon team. I will admit it. But, right, um... That strength of feeling uh, applies, I would say, 10 or 20-fold. I think um, Tyranid players are annoyed of being told that they should uh, want these. Because at least the Galapox have got the right number of arms and legs to be a demon. Um, you know, not necessarily a horror. But the others are all pretty humanoid. This is like, Tyranid players, they just want, they want Tyranid, big, big, big. Tyranids with, with, with many limbs like Tyranids are supposed to have, you know? It's what they want. So it's what they should get. So maybe they'll do it. So then if it's going to be Katachan Jungle Fight, like, all the first boxes for each season, right? Octarius, uh, Into the Dark, and Salvation have all been human versus Xenos, right? Space Marine Scouts aren't, they say, I would say that they're human because they're not yet full of stars. I'm sure someone will say, well, actually, they've got certain of the organs, so they're kind of not human anymore. But, but you know, they are humans um, enough, right, for my analogy and my narrative to kind of work. So, yeah, all the Volbin humans versus, versus Xenos, so I would expect that trend to continue. And certainly with the first two... You got the sense that you got hu the, the humans were really invented to be a, a strong, 
a strong kind of pull and a, a viewpoint character for the setting to really quickly communicate with people what the setting was about you know i remember that the kill team Octorius launch you had the video with the krieg and the orcs and the gas mask head and that orange gas mask head was everywhere very strong image and then the navy very quick thing to really convey what the space hulk setting was and the, the spaceship combat Season 3, not so much, because Season 3 setting, nobody really knows what it is. The branding is a lot weaker. I mean, and that's not something people talk about, but the branding of a Season 3 is a lot weaker. Like, the theme and the branding. Like, think of think of Season 1 of Kill Team, you're probably thinking of that orange Krieg head. Like, it's Krieg on Octarius. Like, that's... Ooh. And think of Season 2 of Kill Team, and you're probably thinking of the Into the Dark Bot. You're probably thinking of the, the Navy on the Space Hulk, right? Season 3 of Kill Team, it doesn't have a visceral... Uh, visual um, hook that sort of sits like a, 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 a in your mind, you know, as as something to really uh, uh, a real icon for the for the for the for the season. In my opinion, this is all my opinion, though. Um, yeah, and so if you're going to say it's going to be Cast Chance versus um, Cast Chance versus Tyranids, does that mean that the last part of the catchphrase has to also be true as well? Do they have to be Catachans versus Tyranids in the jungle? Well, n- no. Yeah, no. I would probably stick by the idea that they're going to be ruins, because the ruins translate really well into 40k. They could be jungle overgrown ruins, right? Ruins with vines and stuff off up them. Um, you know, to sell the box as jungle themed, and they probably print the the cardboard floor in the kill team box to be quite jungly but i would imagine that the pieces themselves are going to be relatively um ruiny with a little bit of a jungle flavor if that makes sense this is all just this is it's not wish listing but it's prediction but it's pretty loose prediction to be fair right that brings me to the end of my video what do you believe any of it i mean i would definitely believe the valorant rumor about kill team highfall Everything past that point needs to come with a government health warning, to be perfectly honest. But it's been nice to go through it and see what people are thinking and see what people are saying and to have to fill the video mostly with my own speculation, right? What do you want to see? I always ask this question after a rumor video. Like, what do you think and what do you want? And remember that they're distinct questions. So let me know that down below in the comments as well. Uh, a massive thank you to all my members. So members on YouTube, it's like having Patreons, but... It's all on the same system, so you press the join button, you become a member, there's an extra little video there to try and convince you that you want to join, and you pay a monthly amount of money, and you get access to all the live streams that I've done, they all go behind, a, anyone can join the live streams for free every uh, every 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 Tuesday from 7.30 till 10 UK time, that's available for everybody, but then once they've finished, they go behind a paywall, so if you want to see them after they've finished, you have to become a member, uh, and that's the main thing that members get for their for their little bit of little bit of money you also get an extra area on the discord all this kind of thing and it's a really direct way to say thank you but honestly almost rather than become a member i would just really love you to share my stuff with your mates and get them all to subscribe because what i would like to be is one of them proper kill team channels what gets sent stuff from games workshop to review before it comes out so that i can produce videos with the rest of them and do man reads books with the rest of them and be on the in you know sitting in the vip section with glandy and john from wales sipping on our water from our respectively branded water vessels opening our sprues and, and looking at them and, and, and giving you our our takes. But I'm on the outside looking in, you know, um, and the way that, it, and it's not written down anywhere, the way that you apparently help me to realise my dreams is by getting me to 10,000 subscribers, which is like an order of magnitude away from where we are now, I know. I know we're at 1.5k, but if you haven't subscribed, please do. Especially if you've already watched like two or three of my videos. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. It helps me out quite a lot. Just consider it. Right, that's enough begging for subscriptions from me today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you had a good time. Most important thing is to let me know in the comments what you thought of all the rumours and whether you think I'm full of it. Um, and I'll see you on the weekend, probably on Sunday, probably after 6pm, hopefully to say, hey, look, Nightmare's got on pre-order. Yeah? That'd be a good video. It'd be an easy one for me. 
Right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Cheery bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.